good evening everyone uh, welcome to today's friday forum and we welcome ojas sir as well i request amruta Hi. madam to introduce our today's speaker and then we'll proceed for this session uh, thank you very much hello good evening everyone uh, today it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our today's guest speaker mr ojas bhat sir uh, he is a lead learning consultant at enhancers ahmedabad ojas sir comes with an overall experience of 20 plus years in capability enhancement behavioral training performance management hr intervention academics and leadership development he has also facilitated and coached clients from various industries. Sir uh, is a graduate in engineering from National Institute of Technology and postgraduate in business management, specialized in HR. Pursue, uh, he is pursuing his PhD, uh, visiting faculty at the university and avid speaker from at forums like CII, ISTD and management associations. Representative client engagements includes design and implementation implements capability enhancement interventions for reducing gaps in the areas of performance enhancement, capability elevation and competency mapping, conduct psychometric assessments, development centers and design coaching intervention according across levels. Conducted multiple learning sessions in Bangladesh, Vietnam, and Africa for learning corporates. Impact, imparts learning programs across industries like aviation, hospitality, engineering, auto retail, info, IT, engineering, pharma, healthcare, etc. Uh, across levels in India. Areas of expertise include capability enhancement, communication skill, leadership, managerial development, selling techniques, customer relations, and many more. Professional and corporate expertise has also worked in different line functions, which includes capability enabler, learning facilitator, coach, language enhancer, recruitment and staffing operations, and HR consultants. Client levels uh, of expert experience include senior and top management, junior and middle level management. Uh, has also various representative clients from uh, prestigious companies like Adani, Reliance, LNT, Tata Motors, Vodafone, Airtel, Reliance, Air India, Go Air, HDFC Bank, and many more. I welcome you, sir, on behalf of ISCD Anand family. And today's topic is focus and distraction. So it is very rightly said that stay focused, ignore the distractions, and you will accomplish your goals much faster. So now I hand over the platform to Ojas, sir, to start the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. So welcome, everyone. Welcome to our uh, small brief interaction on the topic of focus and distraction. And I am really thankful to ISTD Anand for providing me this platform and this opportunity to be interacting with all of you. So ma'am has already given a, a very, very uh, broad introduction of about me. So I'm just going to be OGES for all of you throughout the session and probably whenever we have future interactions. Now, since this is an online platform, before I begin anything or before I start discussing anything, let's get a few tech checks in place. So if at all you are able to hear my voice clearly and you are able to see me on screen and the screen that I have shared with you, can I just get a quick yes from you in the chat box? Can I just get a quick yes in the chat box from all of you? So I'll just wait for the next few seconds. Okay. So I've got a yes from Joseph, Mukshita, yes, Tanvi, Amrita, Kinjal, Devyan, Uppal. Okay. Salil, Dwani, Journey, okay, Viraj, okay, anyone else? Well, this is also my only chance to say a one-on-one -on -one hi to each one of you, so thank you. Anyone else who is yet to give me a yes? Yes, okay, Vag, Neelam, Yagnesh, okay, wonderful, wonderful, thank you. So, great, it's good to know that we are in sync and everything is in place, all right. 
so now i'll just tell you how the whole flow of the session is going to go uh right now we have a time frame till almost seven o'clock so that is the next 50 minutes that i have with all of you okay so we will be discussing a few things related to the topic and in that there will be a, a small quiz that i'll take up and then a small video that we'll see and interactions that we will do and i from my side may have some queries for all of you so please use the chat box and you can also unmute yourself and share your thoughts with me so these are the two ways in which we are going to interact with each other and post the session that is around 6 55 7 when i wind up the session we can have the next five seven minutes for any questions that you have right so please feel free to pose any questions and this is what i have to interact with you so let's get going with the discussion and the topic that we have is on focus and distraction now as we see we live in a world that is connected 24 7 and this topic focus and distraction may not have been relevant earlier as much as it is today it has always been important but not more than what it is today so today we are going to discuss a few aspects related to the topic we will also see some areas where we may want to uh, be aware about a few things and a certain tips that you can use in order to be focused in your approach right so by the end of the session you you may get a few tips that might help you in this endeavor to stay focused and to manage your distractions right wonderful so let's get going now the first thing that we are going to start off with is we are going to start off with a small quiz now there will be six questions that i'll pose for you one by one so this is where the question will be presented here plus there will be three options given in the boxes beside it so you may have to select the right answer from these three options and you will have to put your answer in the chat box and this is how we are going to take this forward so this quiz focuses on the relevance or an awareness on the aspects of focus and distraction great so good to go everyone and let me start with the first question that i'm going to pose for you so the first question that comes your way is this which is the biggest source of distraction at the workplace now this is according to a udemy survey so i've also mentioned the source in case you want to go back and check out or you want to read further on this so mobile phones chatty co-workers and meetings 15 seconds for you to put your answers in the chat box so and again we are not looking at right wrong answer whatever thoughts come to your mind and whatever you feel is the response you might want to go okay so tanvi says b that is chatty co-workers kinjal says mobile phones of course okay chatting neelam mobile amrita mobile phones raju rathod hello raju sir meetings uh, joseph mobile phones krishna mobile okay all okay shwetal says mobile okay mobile 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 okay all right wonderful so thank you for your inputs and according to the udemy survey chatty co-workers surprisingly yes so chatty co-workers are the biggest source of distraction at the workplace okay so the next time someone comes to you for a chat you might want to be aware that oh this could be my biggest source of distraction okay uh just one thing that whatever we discuss today might be more pertinent and the discussions may happen where i might take more discussions related to workplace distractions but i'm also going to take uh, distractions related to our everyday life maybe also in our personal life because whatever concepts we discuss here might be applicable to our personal lives also so just don't take it that it is only related to the workplace or it is only related to the professional arena it is related to in life as general wonderful so let me go on to the second question and the question comes up here for you According to Tech Republic, workers spend an average of dash hours daily accessing digital content unrelated to their profession. So 1.5 hours, 2.5 hours, 3.5 hours. 15 seconds for you. Answers in the chat box. Yes. Any thoughts? 
ओके जोजफ मक्षिता अंकुर राजू सर दिव्यांग तनवी नीलम ओके 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 ध्वनि श्वेतल कृष्णा ऑल राइट ओके 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 ऑल राइट स्टिल अ फ्यू सेकंड्स टू गो मे बी थ्री फोर फाइव सेकंड्स एनी वन एल्स यू टू से ऑल राइट ओके All right, and the answer coming up for you is two point five hours on an average. Now, just look at this aspect: spending two point five hours daily accessing a digital content that is unrelated to their profession. Okay. Now, this goes to show the impact and the seriousness of how much distracted we can be at the workplace, and how much we need to be aware about this. Okay. All right, so let's move on to question number three, coming up right here for you, and that's the third question. Indians spend around dash hours per day on the mobile phones, according to the Times of India. Two point five, four point three, five point six. Talking from the Indian perspective. Okay, Joseph, that's okay. Tanvi, all right, Kinjal. Okay, all right. Jani, Mukshita, Shwetal, Raju sir, Dwani, Ankur. Okay, okay, all right. Well, 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 well. Okay, all right. Okay, so let me give this to you. Anyone else? A few more seconds. Another another three, four, five seconds. Anyone who's yet to give me, please try this out. Do not worry about the right or the wrong responses. And the answer is. 4.3 hours according to a recent times of india survey now imagine spending 4.3 hours per day on the mobile phone and later on as we proceed in the session we will see that mobile phones are the biggest source of distraction in the focus that we want to put into any work and spending almost this many hours on an average of course i i i completely agree that it may be due to the pandemic and the way that we had to spend time within the homes so the easiest way out was to spend time on our mobile phones and the tech gadgets but this is something that we might want to be aware about yes question number 4 coming up right for you another udemy research what percentage of workers in an organization accept to be distracted at work 25 54 and 70 they they accept that yes they are distracted at work so any quick thoughts okay all right well okay yes okay all right okay so for all those who said 25 and 54 i am so happy that you are so optimistic but unfortunately the scenario is not so rosy right so it's not that rosy scenario because almost 70% of the workforce they accept that they are distracted at work and in fact the research also states that only 70% accept that but it could be more than 91% of employees who feel that there is a distraction at work okay so imagine the kind of distractions that we are all living in at this point of time question number 5 coming up right for you on an average an employee is distracted dash times in a day according to a harvard business review source and that is 25 60 and 100 how many times in a day is an employee on an average distracted 15 seconds for you okay all right krishna joseph neelam raju sir kinjal shwetal ankur okay all right okay mukshita all right okay fantastic all right again for all those i mean many of you have written 25 i am so happy that you are so optimistic but again the scenario is not that rosy so according to the hbr harvard business review research it is 60 times on an average in a day that is how frequently employees in an organization are distracted now imagine the kind of distraction the nature of the distraction we are just trying to understand the seriousness of this uh and the last question coming up to you okay from the total distractions of an employee on an average in a day almost dash percent are unimportant distractions 30 60 80% 
So we agree that we are distracted almost 60 times a day. But what percentage of those distractions are unimportant distractions or distractions that are a waste of time? Okay, uh, Mr. Chatterjee, can you please mute yourself if you don't mind? Mr. Salil Chatterjee, if you don't mind, I would be really happy if you could mute yourself or probably uh, Joseph or Amrita can do this. Okay. All right, okay, yes, and I would give this to you and that is absolutely correct. 80% of the distractions are unimportant. So to put it in a perspective, of course, this is where my quiz will end, but to put it in a perspective, frequent distractions are going on. Most of the distractions that happen in the workplace, they are completely unimportant. We are only talking from the workplace perspective, but such distractions are also very common and that happen in our everyday lives also. Okay, So let's focus on this aspect of what we call as the distractions. Now the main distraction culprits are many okay? and what we are going to now understand is we are going to understand the perspective behind focus and distraction. There is a need for us to be focused at the workplace or in our daily life or in whatever we are doing. But what is it that will help us to stay focused? What will help, what will help us to keep away from distractions? This is an attempt to discuss on those aspects. We've already established the relevance and the seriousness of how distractions are affecting us at every walk or every phase of our life. Okay. All right. Now, when I say distraction, when I say distraction, so I'm going to give you the next 30 seconds and I want you to put your inputs in the chat box. So, and again, like I said, it's not right, wrong, anything. Whatever thoughts come to your mind, please feel free. Jo aapke mind mein aaye, jo aapko lage, aap wo response de sakte hai. In, in case if you want to unmute yourself and share your thoughts also, please go ahead. So, what I want to know from you is, and a quick question, 30 seconds for you is, what do you understand by distraction? What is your understanding or what is the meaning of distraction? In simple words, if you want to have a working definition, basically, what is the distraction? So I'm going to give you 30 minutes, 30 seconds for this. Sorry. Okay, Yagnesh says, making away from main or important work we are doing. Okay, Yagnesh. All right, so whatever work we are doing, I'm moving away from this. Okay, all right. Yes. Any other thought? We have a few more seconds. Okay, Joseph, getting disturbed by external factors. Okay, Raju, sir, distraction for me is something to divert my attention from my work on hand to some other time waster. Okay. Neelam, unable to focus and concentrate on goal. Okay. Shwetal, deviating and losing concentration. All right. Kinjal, not being able to give 100% to whatever one is doing even if that's entertainment, all right. Utpal, being carried away by anything and losing focus. Okay, fantastic, Utpal. Everyone, wonderful. Ankur, diversion from focus, absolutely. Uh, Dwani, distract, that is off track. Okay, absolutely, wonderful. Yes, uh, five seconds more. Anyone else who's yet to go can give me a quick response. No problem. Okay, good. So, Basically, we are focusing on one task and then moving from that task to any other task. Whether the task is important, unimportant, we are not right now going to categorize it. But distraction is anything that takes away my focus from one task, anything that makes me switch. I want you to remember this word, switch. Anything that makes me switch from whatever task I am doing to another task. Okay. That is what we are going to term as a distraction. All right. So let's look at some examples here. Okay. So here I am running and I am listening to music at the same time. All right. So I'm doing almost two tasks at the same time. Uh, I am watching television and I am eating. Okay. All right. Third. Okay. I am cooking and I am talking to a friend also. Okay. Now, here in this, you will see that we are focusing on more than one task at the same time. Okay. 
And so it is not one task I'm focusing on. I could be distracted by the other tasks. So when I'm eating and probably I'm watching television, I think uh, sometimes our family members often rebuke us that, oh, you are watching television and eating. You might not even remember the taste of the food or I, have, I prepared the food uh, with, 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 so, with so much uh, efforts and you're not even appreciating. You're only focused on the TV and all because we are focusing on one task and then getting distracted by the other. Okay. Now, I want to, you to keep these three tasks in mind and let me also give you another example of the other tasks so keep this as the tasks a so a type of tasks now let's focus on the b type of tasks so b type of tasks so i am working on a uh, on my laptop and i'm also talking to a particular customer or anyone on the phone okay and i'm also using my laptop at the same time i'm talking on the phone and i'm also taking a printout at the same time and I am also talking on the phone and probably I'm, I'm arranging my, my, my sheets or I'm, I'm, I'm organizing my desks at the same time. And I'm also talking to a customer probably. Okay. So these three tasks and these three tasks. So A type of tasks and B type of tasks. So another question to all of you. What do you think is the difference between the A type of tasks and the B type of tasks? Can you see any subtle difference between the A type of tasks and the B type of tasks? Because in both the tasks, we are getting distracted by other activities. But how do you differentiate between A type of tasks and B type of tasks? So any quick thoughts? Any quick thoughts? I'm again going to give you the next 25 seconds, probably 30 seconds. So A tasks and B tasks. Okay, Tanvi, A types are personal, B types are professional. All right. Raju sir, A are social and personal, B are more related to the workplace tasks. All right. Okay. Uh, in B types, you are doubly overworked with presence of mind in both tasks simultaneously. All right, Joseph. Thank you. All right. Any, any, any other thought? Uh, anyone? Anything else? B type of tasks are professional in the workplace. All right. Okay. Fine. So one, definitely I have seen a segregation that A type of tasks are more personal and B type of tasks are more professional, uh, more distraction in A. All right. Okay. But if you want to do more than one task at the same time, which tasks are easier to do? The A type of tasks or the B type of tasks? Which type of tasks are easier? The A type of tasks or the B type of tasks? I mean, talking on the phone and attending a customer or probably eating and watching television, which is an A type of tasks. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So relatively for A type of task, you are putting your mental, your cognitive efforts only on one task. Okay. So you, if you, if you, if you are jogging and you are listening to music, then probably you are only listening to music and you are, you are mechanically jogging. Or you are mechanically eating food and then you are only focused on listening to the dialogue that is going on on the television or probably uh, the music or the song that is playing there. Right. The same way if you are arranging a desk. Now let's see if for the B type of task, if you are arranging a desk and you are also talking on this, you have to put your mental efforts in both the type of tasks. You talk on the phone also and you have to use your Excel sheet also. So the B type of tasks require more efforts from your side. But in both the aspects, the focus is getting diverted because we are distracted by the tasks that we have to do or the tasks that we have to perform. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Can you just no. put uh, everyone on the mute if you don't mind? So I'm not sure. Uh, Ankur, Ankur, can you put yourself on mute, please? Ankur, I mean, if you don't mind. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. So now at any point of time in both these situations, we are not focused on one task because the focus keeps on shifting. That means I'm doing one task, but then my focus keeps on shifting. So whenever my focus keeps on shifting, that means I am getting distracted. Okay. Now this is something that we need to understand what happens in our brain whenever the distraction is going on. Okay. Whenever we are distracted, 
So if I am actually writing down, let's say if I am writing in my notebook on a particular uh, project or I am having a creative idea on a project and I want to note down something on the in my notebook. So I am focused on this, but at that time I have a buzz in my or a ping in my mobile phone. Now, as soon as the ping happens, so my focus is getting distracted. I am getting distracted. My focus shifts because I am switching a task. So, in the brain, there are a few things that happen. So, according to the neuroscience perspective, it is very important for us to understand what happens in the human brain when we move our focus from one task to another task, right? Okay. And in order to understand this, let's start with a quick two-question pop quiz that I am going to give you again to understand how the brain functions or what happens to the brain when we shift our focus all right so quick pop quiz here switching a task once for one tenth of a second leads to a dash percentage drop in productivity according to a harvard business review survey 10 percent 25 percent 40 percent quick inputs in the chat box if you switch a task only once, that means for even one tenth of a second, it leads to a dash percentage drop in productivity. Something which is very, very important for us to keep in mind. Okay, because we are focusing on what are the consequences when we switch tasks. Okay. What are the consequences when we switch tasks? Oh, okay. All right all right okay so exactly okay thank you all and yes the situation is grim and most of you have understood the grimness of the situation switching the task once for one tenth of a second leads to a 40 percent drop in productivity now imagine that you are working on your uh, laptop or you are working on a project you are thinking about something you are you are you, you are finalizing a few things you are very focused in the task and suddenly there is a a, a co-worker who wants to have a quick chat with you and he just calls out your name now as soon as you shift your task it could be one tenth of a second that is a 40 percent drop in productivity one shift one switch 40 percent drop in productivity okay all right of course it could vary accordingly but up to 40 percent so we are always looking at the grim side of it second question it can take us dash minutes to get back in the zone after switching a task once when i say zone zone is again back to the original sincerity and focus that is where we call it back to the zone again from the harvard business review source it can take us 7 minutes, 12 minutes, 23 minutes to get back in the zone after switching a task once. 15 seconds for you in the chat box. Okay. Okay, 7, 12, 23. All right. Okay, well, okay. Well, many of you have given me 12 again. I love the optimism that you have, but the picture again is not that rosy because it says it takes almost 23 minutes to get back in the zone after switching a task. Now imagine, imagine you want to be focused. You have shifted a task once productivity has dropped and again it takes almost 23 minutes before you are back in that focus in the initial sincerity that you have such a huge huge effort that we have to put and such an impact that it causes when we shift a task once when we are distracted even for one tenth of a second okay now why this happens is we want to understand two key processes of the brain when we are performing a task now, what happens to the human brain? So, it says that uh, neuroscience tells us that whenever we are focusing on a task, the brain allocates resources, right? 
So again, again, going very deeply into the neuroscience aspects is that, okay, the neocortex of the brain allocates resources for us to focus on a task. I'm not going to delve that deeper. Uh, we, again, do not have the time. So just keep this in mind. The moment I start focusing on a task, let's say I want to draft an email. So when I sit in front of my laptop or my computer or PC and I open my Google Mail and I'm I'm, I'm starting to draft an email. So when I want to do this task and I want to focus on this task, two things are happening in the brain. And these two things, these two processes, they are called goal focus and rule activation. So the first thing is a goal focus. Now, when I say goal focus, that means my brain resources tell the other resources of the brain that the focus is drafting an email. So the goal is drafting an email. And as soon as I decide that the focus or the goal is drafting an email, all the other neurological systems, they get aggravated and the rules of writing an email, they are activated in my brain. So at whatever points in my brain, wherever I have put those memories, those action words, those learnings, or those habits of drafting an email, they are all activated. So this whole system is activated for drafting an email. Okay. So goal focus and rule activation. This thing happens. Okay. So similarly, let's say I am drafting an email. So goal focus and rule activation. Now, as soon as this happens, there is a ping on my mobile phone or there is a call on my mobile phone. Now, as soon as there is a call on my mobile phone, another thing happens in the brain and what happens the goal focus says that now the goal has shifted from task one to task two that means the goal is no longer drafting an email the goal is now focusing on the mobile phone to understand who is calling and in what perspective or in what context is the call coming okay so the goal has now shifted and as the goal shifts, and okay, for this, I want you to keep one thing in mind from all the neurological perspective, from all the neurological aspects, it has been concluded that the brain can only focus on one task at a time. We can only focus on one task cognitively at a time. The brain is unable to focus on two cognitive tasks where it has to think in two different directions at the same time. So since the goal is now shifted, so the goal has shifted from writing an email to looking at the mobile phones and rule activation, the second, second, second process. So all the rules of task one, they are off. That means all the rules of writing an email, they are off and all the rules of attending a call, phone call, they are on. So I start relating, oh, this is, this is, this is my colleague's phone and it must be calling in that context. This all happens within a fraction of a second, but this thing, goal focus and rule activation. So shifting of the goal and deactivation of the earlier rules, activation of the new rules, all of this takes some time. Okay. And when this thing happens, what is the impact? So the impact is that there is almost a 40% drop in productivity almost a 40% drop in productivity and this 40% drop in productivity if we put it in a perspective it is just like losing one night sleep so you don't sleep for a night and then you come to work and the sluggishness that you feel that happens when you just shift a task once or it could be like smoking a, a small joint of marijuana or a psychotropic drug and then focusing on something or doing trying to do something now, all of this happens when there is a shift once that you do from one task to another task. And I want you to imagine the number of times that we are shifting our focus throughout the day. The number of times we are getting distracted throughout the day. The number of times we are switching from one task to another task throughout the day. And imagine that there is a small momentary gap that happens between shifting and rule, rule shifting, uh, 
a rule activation, goal focus. Now, when this happens a number of times, there is so much drop in the productivity. And we actually may tend to get so exhausted that the mind just stops functioning at a certain point of time and we feel completely sluggish, we feel completely demotivated, drained of our energy. And it can also have a lot of other consequences. Right? I want you to watch this video. So please watch this along with me and then we are going to talk a little more on this. children lost their lives because of the reckless actions of Thomas Croker. On the 10th of August 2016, Mr Croker made the decision to change his music on his phone whilst driving a lorry at 50 oh. miles per hour. Okay. His lorry hit a queue of stationary traffic and took the lives of Tracy, Ethan, Josh and my daughter Amy. He was so distracted, he made no attempt to slow down. Anyone using a mobile whilst driving is guilty of dangerous driving. We urge you to make a personal commitment to stop using mobile phones whilst driving and make our roads safer for everyone. Okay, so. Now, when you relate this to what we just discussed, goal focused and rule activation. Now, imagine and just like this happens whenever we are driving a vehicle, right? And you just momentarily decide that, oh, I want to play the music on uh, the music system of my vehicle. Or probably I just want to, I, I want to change a channel on my uh, music system or I want to just pick up a call. So let's say even when you change the radio station on your music system or you insert a CD into your music system or you want to on the music system, when such things happen, the goal focus and rule activation comes in the picture. So initially when you're driving, okay, the brain says that the rules of driving are on because the goal is driving a car. You suddenly decided to play music. Now so... The goal is now not driving a car, the goal is playing the music. So all the rules of driving a car, they are off and all the rules of playing the music or starting the music, they are on. So this momentarily small microsecond shift that happens, actually nobody is driving the car. The car is going on its own because the only rules activated are playing the music because the brain can only focus on one task at a time. And that is the reason if you see from all the history of accidents, it is that momentary small distraction and away from or shift away from the focus that happens. And it is due to this that majority of the accidents happen and something that we also witnessed here in this video. So not only are distractions harmful for us, but they can also be very harmful for others when they creep up in the unlikeliest of places and something that happens as commonly as driving a vehicle. Okay. So it's very important for us to be aware and understand how we want to go ahead. Right. So for focus, one task at a time, we can give 100%. In fact, the potential of the human brain is unlimited. It's absolutely unlimited. But the moment we start doing multitasking, right? in fact, multitasking is actually considered uh, probably a, a, a competency uh, in modern times. But neuroscience says that multitasking is only a myth because humans cannot multitask. We can perform multiple tasks, but not at the same time. Okay? We need to be focused on one task and then shift, then shift the task from one task and then move on to the other tasks. All right, but modern uh, life, modern times, even modern corporate world, now even virtually working, we have to do so many tasks together. In fact, only focusing on one task at a time is actually a luxury which most of us may not have. 
So the point is, what do we do for this? Okay, how are we going to manage these distractions? So I've got a small tip for you and something that I'm going to share with you. So managing these distractions, we are going to look at switches. Right? I want you to understand the concept of switches, something which is extremely simple. So let me just share it with you and then we will try and put it in scenarios. So switch. Okay. So I'm going to give you two scenarios and I want you to tell me what is the difference between these two scenarios. The first scenario, you are working on a presentation on your laptop and suddenly get a call from your friend to ask about a query. Okay. So this is one thing. Second, you are working on a presentation on your laptop and suddenly call up your friend to wish him or her a happy birthday. Now, in both the situations, you are switching your task. But I want you to give me in the next 30 to 45 seconds, what is the difference between these two switches? What is the difference between these two switches? Because in both the cases, the switch has happened from one task to another task. So 30 seconds for you to give me what is the difference between the two switches. Yeah, any quick thoughts. What is the difference between the two switch? Okay. Okay, journey. On one task, you chose the other, you were interrupted. Okay, Mukshita, for the first switch, I am prepared. For the second, I am not prepared because I may not be expecting a call. All right. Okay, task one is an unknown switch. Okay, Shwetal, Kinjal, happy birthday call will have lesser lag or hangover. Okay, Tanvi, in first case, it's about self. In second case, it's about ourself. Okay, Joseph, in one case, you are disturbed accidentally. In second case, you choose to switch. Okay, Joseph. Wag first needs thinking. All right. Utpal, wishing birthday is voluntary, so we may get back to our presentation with ease and positively after ending the call. Okay. Ankur, second switch is you have decided. First, it was not your wish. All right. Wag, second is voluntary. Okay. Task two, known switch, not taxing. All right. Okay, Shwetal, thank you. Okay. So now, exactly. So in one scenario, Second, you have option to whether to distract or not. Absolutely. So if you are working on your presentation on your laptop and suddenly you decide to call your friend. So when you decide to call your friend, what happens is you decided to switch. You decided to move on from one task to another task. Okay. And the second time you were working on your laptop and you got a call from a friend. So when you got a call, it was not your wish because when the call came, your attention or your focus shifted or the task switched. So we are going to look at the first case. When the switch is initiated by you, when the switch from one task to other task is initiated by you, it is called an active switch. Okay. But when it is initiated by someone else, it is called a passive switch. Now I want you to remember the terminology of these two switches active switch passive switch so active switch something i decide passive switch something that is decided by others or something that others have made me do and that is the reason i have switched all right so active switch passive switch all right so now the question for you which type of switches are easier to control active switch or passive switch 15 seconds in the chat box which type of switches are easier to control and manage active switch or passive switch active switch passive switch okay mokshita journey tanvi kinjal shwetal ankur yes any thoughts i mean you can all ankur okay active switch passive switch okay Okay. So if you say passive switch, that means it is easier for you to control when others call you. It is easier for you to control when others disturb you. 
but it may not be easy for you to control when you disturb yourself mm. okay so what psychology tells us that only i am in my control okay so whenever i have an active switch okay so whenever i have an active switch it is easier to control because that is my decision whether i want to switch or not okay mm. i may not be able to control when others call me or others make me distracted when 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 somebody comes up to me and 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 distracts me but i have a complete control on when i distract myself okay so it is very important to understand this now let's to understand active and passive switches let me give you different scenarios so i am just going to give you an example you have to identify whether it is an active switch or a passive switch so for that scenario you just write an a or a p in the chat box okay you only write the initials so that we can save some time i was drafting an email to my regional head and suddenly realized that i was hungry and went to have something to eat a active switch or p passive switch chat box a okay a ja raha hu dekha active switch passive switch all right okay wonderful so you were drafting an email and you then switched the task for going to eat something so you switched the task you got distracted yourself it's an active switch wonderful second one please i was preparing a rough draft for a proposal and went to canteen for tea after getting a call from my team member my team member called me for tea and then i went to have tea active switch passive switch okay uh okay yes initiated by someone else so mukshita yagnesh you have put a i only want to focus that it was initiated no, you did not want to shift you wanted to work on your proposal but again you know your a colleague sometimes says chalo yaar chai pe kya hai so you moved this and you shifted this so this is where we call it as a passive switch all right third one i was answering my emails when my superior called me up to see him in his cabin with the project reports active switch passive switch passive yes okay absolutely absolutely wonderful yes you wanted to work on your email but your superior called you okay now i i hope we remember the first quiz that we discussed at the beginning of the session chatty coworkers and people around you they can be the biggest source of distraction at a workplace okay wonderful so question uh, statement 4 I was working on the account sheet and stopped to go to my friend's cabin to charge my mobile. So I switched my task. I got distracted. I I I jumped focus and I went to charge my mobile phone. Active switch, passive switch. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Absolutely. Okay, active switch, fantastic. And the last statement coming up for you is, I was working on my Excel sheet when I turned to my colleague to ask for the latest cricket score. Active switch, passive switch. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, you are focused, and then you decide to shift the focus because you want to know the cricket score. Something that we do very regularly. But again. you just keep this in mind when you are doing this goal focus rule activation all those things happening in the yes, chemistry of the brain you are losing out on time okay mm. fantastic so i'm just going to give you a small tip here and then quick 10 tips that will help you to uh, be a little away from distraction and then we'll wind up the session so i am just going to take the next 5 to 7 minutes and then wind up the session please uh, continue yeah ka can you please keep yourself on mute if you don't mind i am not sure the name it says mcat sir or ma'am if you can just mute yourself or probably uh, raju sir if you can just do the needful or joseph if you can do the same thank you so much all right so just a small quick tip 
Mokshita, can't we say that the second situation is still under our control, whether to go to canteen to have coffee or not? So doesn't it? Yeah, it could be. It could be, Mokshita. I completely agree. It could be an active switch. It's only that the initiation, at least because when you are working and somebody even gives you a call to go to the to 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 go to the canteen, a shift has already happened because you shifted from the focus of your laptop to the call. That is why we consider it as a passive switch. Of course, the decision is completely in you. But then by the time again you switch back, you are going to lose some quick time. And that is the reason that we have. Okay. So it could be termed as a passive switch. Of course, there is no straight cut line. Again, all decisions are our decisions, whether we want to switch or not. But it's only about the trigger. Because the trigger happens even when you have a buzz, you have a ping. And you actually shift from one task to other task. So that is a distraction. Even if you don't go, yes, Atpal, in most cases we are dominated emotionally, friends or professionally. Boss is absolutely correct. And that is where we need to be a little more aware about it. Okay. So quickly, simple tip, active switches we need to avoid, passive switches we need to manage. Right. So active switches try to avoid as much as possible because they are in your control. You have the control on whether you want to switch or not, okay, if it's an active switch. So if you decide that, okay, I want to charge my mobile phone, I want to do this, or I want to ask for a cricket score, all of this can be controlled by you because it's in your hands. Passive switches we will have to manage, okay, because they are coming from outside. So I'm going to give you quick tips to avoid distraction at work. And this is going to be the final culmination of our discussion. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Okay, so 10 quick tips to avoid distraction. Again, before I give you this, put let's put it into perspective. We are burdened by distractions on all sides, at the workplace, in the personal life, in the professional life. Right. In the personal life, of course, we may have our own reasons of getting distracted. Professional life, we have also to understand that any distraction, even in work or outside, any distraction eats away into your productivity. Okay, There are distractions everywhere. Number of distractions have gone up because of the technology, the tech, the gadgets, the 24-7 connectedness. Within all of this, there are two types of brain uh, focus areas that happen. Goal focus, rule activation. We have seen that when these switches happen, both these things, they keep on happening. And that eats away into our productivity. 40% drop in productivity happening. Like losing one night's sleep and then coming to work. So if that happens only for one tenth of a second or one shift, imagine the number of times we shift throughout the day. Two types of switches, active switches, passive switches. If you can control these switches, the lesser you switch, the more focused you can remain. So active switches you need to control, passive switches you need to manage. So 10 things you can do. The first thing that you do is call, you want to practice asynchronous communication. Now, when we say asynchronous communication, that means you may not want to respond to messages at the time you get a message, right? So immediately when you get a ping, you, you get a mail, it may not be necessary for you to respond immediately. Because if you respond immediately, the number of distractions, the buzzes, the pings, the mails, the WhatsApp messages, the Facebook messages, all those are n number of times you get distracted. So asynchronous communication. Respond only when you want to. Okay. Respond to the messages only at your time. And for that, the second thing that you can do is you can batch check everything. Sometimes we sit in front of our emails all the time. So whatever we are doing at every time there is a ping in the email. What you can do is you can batch check. Batch check means you can check emails three or four times in a day. So normally what people do, they check emails at periodic intervals. So every two hours or three hours, they check an email. Of course, if you have the privilege to do so, please do this. So some people, the moment they start the work, they plan the work and then they check the email first. Then sometime around noon, they check the email and then sometime in the middle of the afternoon, they check the emails. Right. So batch check it. The same for the WhatsApp messages, the same for your SMSs or even for your calls. Okay, so you might want to plan this accordingly. The third tip is you can have a do not disturb sign. Okay. 
So you can have a sign board, you can have a signal. Now normally uh, the time management principle says that we have almost two, two and a half hours, which is the most productive time of a day. This is according to chronobiology. So sometimes probably we may talk on this topic. So according to this chronobiology, we have this uh, two and a half hours of focused time where we are most productive. So understanding what part, of course, there are tests for you to understand what time of the day do you have your most productive zone. At that point of time, try to be away from distractions. So you can actually get the whole day's work completed in those two and a half hours of focused attention. You can have a do not disturb sign where which could be your most productive zone time. The fourth one. So in today's workplace, it's widely accepted that others can book your time in your calendar. So, you know, you want to avoid this calendar Tetris, the game that we play at any point of time, something can get accommodated somewhere. So it is, I mean, if others, they do it, then they will book any time slot for you because nowadays Google meet Google time slots, all of that can be booked. So what you can do is you can, you, you can, you can activate a device or you can create a system by which you don't book time or someone cannot book a time in your calendar without first getting a buy-in from you. So if this thing happens, then probably a lot of these meetings, they just don't happen because the would be meeting organizer, they are normally opt for a phone call or an instant message instead. Right? So we have an app called Calendly. So consider blocking out the meeting free zones on your calendar or using a meeting scheduling tool, which is Calendly so that people book meetings with you only during your scheduled windows, only the windows that you give them, they can book their meetings on there. This is something that we can manage the uh, passive switches. Okay, so that is the fourth tip. The fifth tip is close loop the meetings. So instead of risking following follow up interruptions and a meeting to discuss the previous meetings, ensure that you plan your day in such a way that if you are expecting calls, you call them then say that you will call at this point of the time. Uh, if you are expecting SMSs or emails, you can send an email saying that you will be only able to get back to them after five in the evening or four in the evening. So you know that there will not be any unnecessary interruptions coming your way. This is the fifth part. The sixth one is you might stop using the reply all mechanism in the emails. Right. So reply all is normally is used as a mechanism to share accountability, but this only adds unnecessary chatter to people's inboxes and headspace. So you also avoid it and you might also request others to avoid the reply all function. Right. So you might want just want to take more ownership of your decisions and only email people who actually need to be informed. The next quick one is use quiet spaces for work. Now all of this, you know, open plan offices or open spaces that has created endless distractions. And we saw earlier how chatty co-workers and how people around us and how many number of times an average employee is distracted. So try to find a space which is away from distraction. Uh, nowadays we have work from home uh, schedules also. So try to find a quiet place where unnecessary distractions, they do not eat away into your productivity. The next, you can just push or turn off the push notifications on all your gadgets. So to avoid the impulses of responding on cues, you can just push off these notifications. That is something that can be done. Okay. Yes, Utpal, I'll just come back to this. Yeah, so ninth one. So we all know about the airplane mode. So you can also use airplane mode to limit the text message or phone call interruptions during certain times of the day. So if the idea of doing this gives you anxiety because we are 24 seven connected, you can always exempt specific numbers such as those of your loved ones or your valued ones or your bosses and other important business associates. So you can set a do not disturb mode. Now, there are some aspects on the iPhone that allows you to get only designated favorite contacts can get through and call you others cannot reach you. And then of course you can see in your missed call intimations and then you can call them back. And the last one is you can have minimal layers of approvals. 
Okay. So stripping away unnecessary layers of approvals or unnecessary chats or unnecessary permissions or non-consequential things. If you have them, you can pile them up in the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, but try to keep your most productive zone completely vacant. Okay. So these are 10 quick tips. So Utpal, just for you, uh, close loop the meetings. So when we say close loop the meetings, that means after a meeting has completed, if you have to send something to someone, if you have to send the minutes of the meeting, if you have to send an email, if you have to send an attachment, if you have to plan something, give others some information, do that on your aspect rather than waiting for others to call you up. Because if you are not prompt enough to do things that have been discussed in a meeting, people will keep on calling you at all odd times of the day and then you can only add to the number of distractions in your already distracted world so at the very end human beings evolved to conserve energy in order to stand a shot at surviving right so this is our survival instinct so as such we are predisposed to picking up the lowest hanging fruit or doing the easiest thing first because chances of survival increase when we do the easiest thing so checking an email responding to a whatsapp message that is easier than focusing on a presentation or working on an ms excel sheet or probably working on the next project report that you have so be aware that in working out the easiest options or the most comfortable options we are getting distracted as much as possible and the lesser we get distracted the more we are going to be productive and this is something that we'll have to keep in mind distraction or avoiding distraction is a matter of personal choice it is something that we will have to be accommodative to we will have to get accustomed to because the lesser the active switches you make and more the passive switches you manage this is where we can be away from distractions so it is a choice it is my choice and the more aware i am and the more aware i am that this is something that i will be able to do only then i'll be able to be away from distractions right everyone so this is my contact detail in any case if you want further aspect on this or you want to have any queries posed to me please feel free to do so and uh, from my end thank you all for being so wonderfully participative throughout the session and thank you all for uh, your inputs and your regular inputs and Raju sir thank you for the opportunity and ISTD Anand thank you so much for welcoming me in this session so thanks a lot and now if there are any questions please feel free to pose and if you have any questions we have the next five minutes if not then I'll hand over to Joseph or Raju sir or anyone to do the needful. Thank you. So I'll just stop sharing the screen and I will hand it over to you. So any question anyone? Any thought? Okay. So no question. Fantastic. <laughs> Sir, thanks a lot. It was very enlightening to hear you. The last 10 tips you gave were almost like 10 <laughs> golden commandments in this modern life. And we'll try to focus on those tips. And I'm sure we are all going to get benefit from that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you so much. Yes. Hey, Dharmendra, how are you? <laughs> Good, good. It's, it's, it's always good to see known faces. Yes. Aishweta Raju sir. Okay. So, Joseph, uh, are we done for the day? Can we wind off if uh, nobody has yes, any sir. question? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. If there is no question, we can wind up. Yes, sir. So, uh, as the rightly said, we have to focus on the work. So, officially, I am uh, Absolutely. Uh, winding up this session by saying thank you very much to the uh, what, sir. And uh, thank you, audience. Regard. Uh, who has participated today and uh, just to uh, inform you we'll be putting this on our IST Anand chapter YouTube video uh, and you can refer your friends also to see this and have focus on your work 
and your routine life. Thank you very much, all who has joined us today, and we'll be seeing you again Absolutely. next Friday for the uh, another session Absolutely. at six o'clock. The same user ID and password. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.